So I'm mostly interested in how the processes of nerve cells are actually suffering in neurological diseases. But this is not only something that happens in disease, it is also part of our normal development when our brain adapts to the environment. And I'm interested in the parallelism between what's happening in disease and in development. I guess the question here is which form of scientific explanation I favor most and I think uh, for me the starting point is in most cases the uh, morphology of nerve cells or the form that nerve cells have because I think this is actually the most outstanding thing about uh, what sets apart the nervous system from other organs like for example the, the liver, the enormously branched structures of these cells and how something like that can be stable over time is for me the starting point of most of our questions. So, Explaining that and therefore explanations that can shed light on that is what fascinates me most. It depends a little bit on how you define recent history. If I take um, the last 50 years since perhaps the um, Second World War, I think it was a development in computer science. I mean, I think there's no question about that. In my specific field of biology, it's also very clear that it has been our modern understanding of the structure of the genome and actually the structure of DNA and the genetic code. And I would elaborate on that because I think these are the two basic information technologies that we have. The one is the technology that we use to process information. The other one is how um, our biology actually stores and reads out information. I think that's essentially the entire basis of our modern um, biological understanding. I guess that's when you start a project. I mean, in the end, um, you know, there are rules about how science should go forward, but in the end, the starting point always is an act of imagination and creativity. In that sense, science is not so different from art. The big difference is that we have reality constrain our fantasy and our creativity, and that's something that um, actually makes science so beautiful, is that we're not entirely free-floating. We are free to be creative and we have to be imaginative, but at the same time we have a reality that tells us which of our ideas conform to our reality and which are just the products of our imagination.